Barcelona with a 5-1 victory over Valladolid. But Sid, it was one of those special nights where Lionel Messi will grab all the headlines. Yeah, and rightly so. And yet, of course, it's one of those special nights that have become kind of routine. I mean, one of these days, Lionel Messi is going to run up the pitch, cross the ball in and then head his own cross into the net. Uh, it's, it's got that silly. There's, there's nothing left for him to do where he's going to save a penalty or something. Uh, he, he was just <laughs> extraordinary tonight. Um, he scored two, he provided two. The touches at times were just absurd. Um, and, and, you know, I, I know it's a cliche to say we've run out of words. And, of course, you haven't run out of words, not least if you're allowed to turn to swear words and just say, you know, holy whatever it was going to be. Um, but he's, he's just extraordinary. I mean, genuinely, you know, I say this obviously as, as someone who, who's focused on the Spanish league, who watches him regularly, but he is so far ahead of everyone else um, that, that it's just ridiculous, really. Gab, is this a Spanish bias from Sid? Uh, no, I mean, look, I, I was thinking back to, you know, he's had more important performances. Obviously, he has. But uh, what he turned on tonight, when you put it, you know, within the context of what Barcelona's season has been like, of, of obviously the injury, uh, of the fact that, you know, he, he barely gotten off the, the, the mark in terms of scoring goals... Um, you know, it really is quite remarkable. It's almost like he kind of woke up, Ballon d'Or's around the corner, and uh, he's like, hey, guys, remember me. Ronaldo fans don't think so. No, Ronaldo fans. <laughs> it's funny, though, isn't it? Oh, I mean, it's, wow. it's like, <laughs> I mean, it's like, look, I don't know. We don't, you know, we don't gravitate one way or the other. You just have to sit back and admire how often, and I think that's the most important thing, as much as how great some of the players have been in the goals and it's how often. Yeah. That's the key because there are people that come along and do special things but not, not for the, the period that he and Ronaldo, to be fair, uh, but it, they just continue to, to, to take things to another level. I mean, and, you know, and then we go back to, well, is he as good as what he was in the 70s or the 80s? He can only do what he's doing at the moment. There is nothing... I don't think we'll see the lights again for a long, long yeah. time. Not anybody who's been able to manipulate the ball like that. Craig brings up a good point. You know, if you've seen the Maradona documentary, it's fantastic. But what <laughs> it highlights, that really, it wasn't a very long spell no. of brilliance yeah. compared to what Messi has brought to the table. Uh, listen, in all honesty, between, between Messi and Ronaldo, I don't think we've seen this type of consistency, consistency certainly at this level, from anybody else bar maybe Pele, and that was a, that was a different era with, with um, you know, a, a totally different dynamic. I think what stands out as well, whenever those two step on the field, is how much better than everybody else in world football that they are. I think that is something else I don't think we've been able to say about anybody who's, who's preceded them. The just gap in talent between them and everybody else who's playing the game um, exceeds anything that, that you expect. And, and we, we're talking about players in their 30s, let's remember. Yeah. These, these aren't players in, in the peaks of their careers anymore. They're in their 30s and still this much better than everybody else. Best free kick taker, Sid? Yeah, um, probably. I, I'm, I'm really struggling to think of one who's, who's been as efficient from free kicks. Who, there was a moment tonight on Spanish TV, it was quite nice, when the free kick um, was given. The, the commentators are talking about it and one of them says, well, this is perfect messy position. And then one of the other commentators, I think, in fact, I think it was Mike Robinson, of course, the, the former Liverpool player, says, I don't know, it's a couple of metres too far back for Messi. And I'm going to admit now that I was watching this on my phone because I was coming into work and my phone has a very slight delay. And of course, I also have text alerts. And just at the time when Michael Robinson says, I don't know, it's a couple of metres too far away, it flashes up on my phone and says, goal Barcelona. And then on the screen, wallop, <laughs> this extraordinary free kick. And you thought, well, there you go. We knew really, didn't we? I mean, he, he is incredible. And, and just to pick up on that idea of the consistency, there's a very nice line from Jorge Valdano, who, of course, played with Diego Maradona at the 86 World Cup. And Valdano was asked about this constant um, comparison between Messi and, and Maradona. And he said, well, look, one of the things about Messi is that Messi is Maradona every day. And even Maradona wasn't Maradona every day. Um, mm. And it may well be that Maradona's peaks were higher. And of course, look, we're never ever going to argue against Maradona and what he did in 86. And of course, Messi hasn't been able to replicate that. Um, but, but that consistency is, is extraordinary. And you can talk about players in this generation like Zidane and Ronaldo and Ronaldinho and players who are absolutely just, just out of this world. Uh, but these two and this decade, I mean, it's a decade, it's more than a decade that they've dominated. It's just mind-blowing.
It's weird, isn't it, Sid? Barcelona at the top of the table. Obviously, Real Madrid have been there as well over the last couple of weeks. But we've talked about these teams being quite critical of both of them. If we focus on Barca mm. in particular, Ter Stegen, of course, quite outspoken, wasn't he, after that Champions League win, saying things need sorting out. Valverde addressed that. How, how close is Valverde to the brink? Well, I mean, look, on the face of it, you, 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 you look at those problems and you think he's only a couple of bad results away. But, of course, he's had those bad results. He had them against Roma and he had them against Liverpool. Uh, and both times he came for it, in part because of the support of the dressing room, in part because of the support of the board. I think also as well, and one of the things that actually we haven't talked about, and I, I include myself in this, maybe in part because the other alternatives weren't really there. The obvious candidate to take over wasn't really available. And so... I must admit, I, I kind of, unless there's a complete disaster, I find it very difficult to imagine a scenario in which he doesn't see out the season. That said, mm. I, see it, I think it's quite difficult to imagine a scenario in which he does continue into the new season. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.